So yeah, you read the title correctly. I purchased 100 broken 3.5 inch floppy diskettes. Let's talk a little bit about why. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today's video, as you can tell by what we've got here on the desk, is going to be an unboxing of a pretty unique and interesting product or collection of products if you want to call it that. So I recently discovered this website called floppydisk.com, actually through the YouTube channel Great Big Story. And they did a, I will leave their video link down below because they did a, a very good video on this website. And as you can probably tell by the name, this is a website that sells floppy diskettes, both three and a half inch and five and a quarter inch. And I believe they are the only company, at least in the United States, that sells floppy disks. And yes, they are still in business in the year 2020 because there are people that still rely on floppy disks, believe it or not. Not only private citizens who just want to purchase these, and th this was kind of just a fun purchase, and we're going to be kind of talking about why specifically that I purchased this. But there's also, I mean, the U.S. government and certain medical institutions actually still rely on floppy disks for certain legacy systems that are still in use. So they are still needed today. So what this company does is because floppy diskettes are not being produced anymore, they're, they're not being manufactured anymore. What they do is they purchase old floppy disks in bulk and they essentially refurbish them. They kind of clean them up, peel any of the labels off of them, format them, repackage them, and sell them. And as you can imagine, they probably get a decent amount of disks that are broken, that you just, you know, cannot be read, cannot be used anymore. And what they do with those is they sell those as well, obviously for a much cheaper price. This right here cost me $15, yeah, $15 for 100 broken three and a half inch floppy diskettes. Now you might say, well, why on earth would they do this? Well, because believe it or not, there are actually a couple of pretty creative uses for floppy disks. And if you want to create, for example, an art piece, and there's actually been a couple of people that have done that, that have uh, that actually have their work displayed on floppydisk.com, it would make more sense to purchase broken diskettes as opposed to new ones, or well, not new ones, but ones that are working that, and that have been refurbished because those are gonna cost more. So yes, this only cost me $15. I think it came to about 24, like 20, $23-$24 with shipping. So yeah, we're just going to be opening this up here and talking about why I purchased these. Now one of those reasons is obviously to make a video about this because I thought this was pretty unique, but also uh, to kind of maybe accomplish a possible channel project that I've kind of had in the works or have been thinking about, and I think this would uh, kind of help with that. So let's just open this up. Now it came in this priority mail flat rate envelope, and you can see that what it, it, it looks like they just put the diskettes in here because these are them right here, and the the uh, envelope is actually torn. So we're just going to continue that tear basically, and just tear this open. And what's cool about these is there are multiple uh, different types of floppy disks that, that of broken floppy disks that you can buy so they sell broken three and a half inch and broken five and a quarter inch diskettes but for both of these they have like two separate options and the one that i got here is the cheaper option which what that is is it is a bunch of random floppy diskettes that still have labels on them which i thought was really cool and that's why that i wanted to kind of unbox this and we can take a look at some of these floppy disks so here's an aol uh it says hook up to a world of fun and excitement it's fast just three easy steps and you're online 10 hours free, $25 value. So yeah, these have the label on them. And what they also have is if you wanted to get kind of cleaner floppy diskettes that don't have any labels on them or any writing or anything like that, they have a, I believe it's like double the price or more than double the price. I think it's like 30 or $45. And you can get broken floppy diskettes that look new. Like they look, they don't have any labels on them, no writing. So if you were wanting to use it in like an art project or something like that, uh, that could be, that would probably be more ideal. But I thought it was cool to get these ones with the labels because we can go through these and just kind of look at all these random diskettes and I just thought it would be pretty cool for a video. Uh, so let's just start going through these. So yeah, America Online, we got one of those right here. Now there's all you know different colors in here. We've got black, we've got that beige color, blue. Uh, so here's one that is just blank. I mean, it's got like, I mean, these are all gonna be random. Some of them are gonna have writing on them. Uh, this right here, what do we have? We've got a IBM format. This is a, 
yeah so check that out this looks like it has Norton on it and yes all of these do not work so we're just gonna pull a bunch of these out and just start going through them oh look at this one the little protective cover is actually uh, broken because it, it does not automatically latch back into place so we've got one here that's a, a Memorex disc here is ooh check this out so here's IBM personal system 2 model 50 slash 60 reference disc gap I just think this is really cool because like this is kind of like a like a treasure chest of sort like you don't know what's going to be in here what these discs i mean obviously they all don't work but it's just cool to like look at these like i mean we're going to get random like i have no idea what's going to be in here there, there could be macintosh discettes in here here's like i said an ibm personal system 2 diskette i mean there's just it's just you know kind of cool and I, I thought it'd be fun to uh, open this on video here's a blank this actually looks kind of like one of the uh, neon discettes that i have um we've got a canon printer driver here's a mouse setup disc here's one that's just blank there's not even like a label on it but it is very yellowed as you can see uh reader reader rabbit from the learning company norton utilities for windows 95 by Symantec. i mean this is just really cool uh fractal design painter check that out uh drive copy so we are going to set kind of the more interesting ones aside ones that have you know labels that were actually sold by a company in this case ibm for or that that came with the ibm personal system too we got an aol one again we're going to keep that norton uh, one right there so we'll just set these up here and we'll keep going through these so right here we got a whole stack of them here so yeah i'm what i've been seeing is a lot of these are going to be uh, just kind of floppy disks that were purchased uh, blank and were used personally. So, ooh, here we go. Microsoft Windows Software Development Kit. Check that out. When, uh, Microsoft C 6.0 Runtime Libraries. That's a that's a pretty cool one. Here is uh, Microsoft Windows. This is uh, Windows version 3.1. I've got like five different copies of Windows 3.1. Uh, ooh, we have an iOmega Jazz install disk. Check that out. It's copyright September 1996 that's pretty cool so i am going to kind of scrub through the ones that are just blank or that have like someone's handwriting on them because i really want to get into and just see how many of these uh floppy discs that have uh or that that came originally with software on them and, and you know kind of have some of the more interesting ones here uh and check so check this one out this is a ether disc 3 com uh, driver there's a dell so this came with a, a dell computer copyright 1999 to 2000 and but this one's physically damaged you see that it's bent here and look at this it's literally coming apart so if you've ever wanted to know what what the inside of a three and a half inch floppy disk it looks like well here it is right here we're just going to peel this back because i mean this thing's broken anyway so we'll just take this off and yeah here it is you've got the covering and the actual uh disk where the data is uh is, is stored um so yeah that's that's what the inside of a of a three and a half inch floppy disk it looks like uh we've got some other ones here we've got uh, let's just let's just grab a whole another handful of them out of here oh my gosh kid picks anyone remember this program this is kid picks 2 for the or disc 2 well kid picks 2 disc 2 uh for the macintosh so here is a uh piece of macintosh software and i believe we have we got disc number three and is this yep disc number one so we have disc one two and three and these are all in pretty good shape again physical shape because they're all broken uh <laughs> just to point that out again uh let's see what else we got here oh my gosh mario teaches typing i actually did a video on this but i i don't own a physical copy of it man so here's disc number two we've got disc number three it would be kind of cool if we have i mean so yeah, so we've got disc number one as well. So there are actually like proper set. I mean, some of these are just like, this is a rant. I mean, this is just disc one of a Windows 3.1 setup uh, set. So obviously not the entire set is going to be in here because I would assume these are all just thrown in like a bin somewhere and they just take these out. I'm sure there's no real rhyme or reason for like selecting certain discettes. Maybe they like try to kind of keep, for example, this is a program contained on three i mean it, it it could be more than three but we've got the three discettes here maybe they try to keep them together but i would assume they just kind of take these and just you know there's like no rhyme or reason they just take a hundred of them count them and put them in a thing and send them out to people and see what else we got and some of these are in pretty poor like <laughs> this one is extremely dirty you can check that out there but yeah so these are all uh, a bunch more blank ones so we definitely have more uh blank floppy discettes than we have ones with labels on them but we got a whole lot more in here, so let's let's pull these out and see what we got. So, 
We got Logitech Wingman. We have a uh, Wingman driver here. This is a uh, joystick, so that's pretty cool. We'll just set that one here. Western Digital Easy Drive hard drive installation utility. I've like kind of set some of these aside because we do have a Norton Utilities disc up here. This is Norton Utilities for the Macintosh. This is for Windows 95, so we'll uh, set that one there. We've got an HP uh, printer driver. Some more blank ones. I see some copied page maker diskettes. Another Canon printer driver. We've got another set of, I mean, I, this might actually be a full set of Norton utilities for the Macintosh. We've got uh, disk number. Oh, oh, yeah. So these aren't really numbered. I mean, this is install me first. So this is probably disk one. We've got utilities disk one and the emergency disk. So we'll set those aside. Ooh, another America. Ooh, two America Online diskettes. Check that out. So these are both the same version, 2.5. So there you go. That brings us to three America Online diskettes. I was kind of expecting more, but because, you know, America Online diskettes, there were there were a lot of them in uh, circulation back in the day. Um, we've got a couple. We've got Mac Draft, Mac Movies. Obviously, it's going to be Mac. And yeah, check these out. These are not high density diskettes. See that? So yeah, if they're high density, they're going to have this little HD logo on there. And they're also going to have this little uh, hole at the top left. So since these are low density, they don't have that, so these are these are pretty cool, and that lets you know that yeah, these are much older. So this is a, this is copyright 1986 for this Mac movie software, so pretty cool. And yes, I would like to take a look at all this stuff, but again, these just don't work. These were purchased solely for the uh, kind of entertainment value of like opening this up uh, on, on on video with you guys. So video for Windows. Oh man, I this was covered in the How Internet Explorer Became Apple's Default Browser video because this there was a version of video for Windows that. Uh, essentially pirated code from QuickTime that led to a whole lawsuit uh, between Microsoft and Apple, which led to the 1997 Macworld deal. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, I'll have it linked up in the cards. But yeah, this is, I don't know if this is that specific version. I mean, it was version 1.1D that uh, had infringing code or, you know, that had essentially copied, uh, literally copied thousands of lines of code from uh, QuickTime and kind of brought it over into video for Windows. So this this could be the version, it might not be, but it's, uh, you know, someone just made a uh, copy of it. So, and yeah, you can probably, well, you can't really see it here, but I've got these two large stacks here. These are pretty much uh, blank diskettes that don't have any, I mean, they like have labels on them, but they were purchased blank and then they were used to make copies or uh, backups of data. So obviously, you know, we have a majority of those, but we still have a pretty decent selection of ones that, you know, came, with labels on them that, that actually were sold with software on them, so it's pretty cool. But we're not done yet. We've got a decent amount of discs left in here, so we're going to pull this stack out. Looks like we have clip art for WordPerfect. We have uh, what looks to be, oh, another Norton Utilities disc for the Macintosh. Set that aside. Uh, yeah, so we got WordPerfect clip art. This is disc 7, disc number 6. Some more blank ones here. Uh, this is Plug and Play Configuration Manager for MS-DOS slash Windows 3.1. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater Show 3 2017 Insert Disk into Drive into Disk Drive and Boot or Reboot the Show Computer. Oh, this might have actually been used at a Chuck E. Cheese. Like an uh, employee would use this to play, I guess, a show. Yeah, that's actually really cool. So if anyone worked at Chuck E. Cheese in the 80s or in the 90s, uh, and, and like you've you've seen one of these, be sure to let us know uh, what was contained on here. But I would assume, judging from the title here, that it was some some sort of show, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I've never actually seen one of these before. So that's definitely really interesting. Uh, yeah, like I, like I said, you you have no idea what you're gonna get in here. Uh, some more blank ones. We've got oh, some more disc four and three to. WordPerfect clip art. And check this out. This is a Claris uh, copy of HyperCard, which as you can tell from the back here, was uh, licensed to them from Apple. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, we'll definitely set that one here. And our last, we've got how many? We got four floppy diskettes left. We have a Palm Pilot. Uh, this one's actually physically damaged. You can see there, kind of unfortunate. Uh, Palm Pilot desktop disk three. Uh, we don't have disk one or two. We've got disk five for WordPerfect clip art, disk two for WordPerfect clip art, 
and uh, another, this is Atlas Pro Data 3 of 5, someone's copy, uh, obviously. So let's just go through these again, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so what I've got in here, these are all of the floppy diskettes that either have no label on them or have a label that were, you know, th these are all, again, just that were purchased blank. These were uh, not sold with software on them. So that's definitely the majority of them here. Uh, I've got here another stack. These are ones that I didn't immediately show you, so we'll just go through these uh, pretty quickly here. So we took a look at the Palm Pilot desktop one. We've got uh, Magic Scan here. This is disk number one for WordPerfect clip art. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That might be a pretty complete copy there. So we got seven disks for WordPerfect clip art. We'll set that one up here. We have uh, the Playroom for Macintosh. We have Managing Your Money, 1994 edition for Windows. We have disc number two, haven't seen a disc one yet. We have uh, Aldus Persuasion, and this is another, this is Emergency Disc 2 for Norton Utilities for Windows 95, and we have Emergency Disc 1 up here, so we'll set that one up there. We've got this Mouse Driver and Utilities. Don't know what mouse it's for. Uh, probably like for some OEM computer or, or something like that. We've got Wildcat 5 Navigator, which looks like it was uh, repurposed as a Windows 2000 boot disk, which is kind of funny. We've got that Canon printer diskette. We'll set that one up there. We have a uh, Netware, and here's, okay, disk number two. So this is uh, interesting. We've got uh, disk two of two. We have two disk twos for uh, the same Canon BJ printer driver. So, uh, yeah, which is, I mean, like I said, what I assume how they kind of package these is it's just random. You could get ones with labels on them, ones with no labels, mixtures, ones that are literally physically broken like this one here. Uh, so you don't know what you're gonna get, but that's kind of the fun in this. And again, this was only $15. I've got the invoice right here that I can show you. There you go right there. So the exact name of the item is 100 use three and a half inch non-working promo. That's what they, the, these were called, they were called promo promo diskettes because they're not blank and they are just in random, you know, condition. So it was $15, shipping was $7.95, comes to a total of $22.95, and uh, yeah, that is it. So what did I purchase these for? Well, like I said, to definitely do a video on, that was one of the main purposes. I also thought it would be cool to maybe use some of these as a backdrop and kind of tack them up on this wall back here somehow and kind of have a nice backdrop for these videos. Um, don't know how exactly I'm going to do that yet. Uh, these definitely need to be cleaned. Like some of these are in pretty bad. I mean, they're in good physical shape, but they've got dirt and grime all over them. Some of them are in very nice shape, like this Word Perfect uh, clip art set here. These are all in pretty good shape. You probably wouldn't be able to tell that these are broken. Um, but obviously we've got ones like this 3Com uh, driver here that are literally complete. I mean, I did separate these, but it was about to separate. Uh, I mean, it was like literally coming apart on, on one side. So, um, yeah, guys, that is it. So if you guys want to maybe see like a video, maybe if I decide to do this, if you guys want to see that, be sure to let me know. But uh, for now, that's going to wrap it up for today's very interesting video. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week on this channel. And if you guys want to purchase a set of broken floppy disk for yourselves. I'll have this link down below and uh, yeah, maybe make your own video and kind of go into this because I think it's just kind of fun like to unbox these and go like, oh wow, that's cool. That's, you know, pretty cool to see that or oh, this one's broken. That, that kind of sucks, but yeah, it's just kind of cool. So I just want to thank you all so much for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video.